Hi guys, this is Dr. Samal Yazad. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over some of the structures, basic structure of the brain or whatever that we can visualize by looking at the models that we have in front of us. So, this is a model of the brain. The brain is composed of the four major parts. The first major part that you can see here is going to be the brain stem, which is a continuation of the spine right above the foramen magnum. It's composed of three parts. Right above the foramen magnum is medulla oblongata, then you have pons, and then you're going to have the midbrain part. So looking at this one here, if I separate it, it must be a little bit easier for you to visualize. So this is a medulla oblongata, then you have the pons, and of course the midbrain, usually the midbrain also called mesencephalon. From there, you come on the back of the brain, this is known as a cerebellum. Cerebellum means that little brain, because that's the second largest part of the brain. From there, we're going to get to the cerebrum, which is the largest part of the brain, composed of two lobes, just like your cerebellum, which has two lobes here. And right down the center part is going to be the diencephalon. Let me look at this structure here. Maybe we can show you the diencephalon a little bit better. So if you look here, this is a diencephalon part. You can see it's composed of two egg-shaped structures that you can see here. These two egg-shaped structures are known as the diencephalon, which compose of thalamus, hypothalamus, and subthalamus area. Now, putting this stuff back on it for right now. Because we're going to separate them, I'm going to show you guys something. So, now, in brain, you can see there are lines. There is one line right down here. This is known as a longitudinal fissure that separates the two halves of the cerebrum from one another. Then, I have another one here, which is known as the lateral fissure separates the temporal lobe from the parietal lobe, okay? And then I have one right down here, which is known as a transverse fissure, which separates cerebrum from the cerebellum part. Looking at the cerebrum, you can see all this convolution here. This convolution is that produce a lot of folds. These folds, because of so much real estate that we have in our skull, everything has to be folded into the smaller one so I can have. The raised portion, part of the cerebrum, is known as the gyrus. The deep part, or the one that is kind of invaginated to the inside, known as the sulcus. If I separate the brain right down the center, now I can visualize some of the structures that are going to be in there. The two half of the cerebrum attached to one another by this structure known as a corpus callosum. The corpus callosum allows the communication to occur between the two sides of the brain. The other thing that also you can see here is presence of this little structure here, which is going to be your pineal gland, which releasing the melatonin helps you to sleep. As you come down a little bit lower here, alongside of this cerebellum, you see this white structure in the form of like a tree branches. These are known as the uh, arbor vitae or the white part. And then on the outside, if you look here, these ridges are kind of similar to these ridges, but more fine. So they don't call this sulcus and gyrus. They call this folia. And the folia that you can see there, it helps with some of the motor activity. When you put the two halves together, right down the center here, this section known as the vermis, and then you have the two lobes, and ultimately, right in this part, you're gonna have the flaconodular part, right on that part. In this area, which is your diencephalon located, within side of our brain, we have four cavities. 
those cavities are filled with the cerebral spinal fluid. And that fluid is the one that circulates and every couple of hours is renewed because your body produces somewhere around 600 milliliter of the cerebral spinal fluid per hour and gets rid of 100 to 150 per hour as well. So these cavities that are sitting here, they're going to be taking an impression of it and the impression of that one gives us something look like this. So think about that this structure is sitting right inside one half and the other one is going to be on the other half of the body. These cavities, these two are known as the lateral ventricles, one located in the right, the other one located in the left cerebral. These two cavities, by way of this opening, known as the interventricular foramen or foramen on Monroe, they are going to be connected to the third ventricle right down the center. Then the third ventricle it sits right here. So this is a third ventricle right alongside here. Then the third ventricle, by way of another canal or uh, channel and opening, is known as the cerebral aqueduct or aqueduct of Silvius, is going to be attached or drain its content to the fourth ventricle. Now you can see those things right here. This is going to be part of the lateral ventricle. From that one, everything is going to be coming through this area, which is the interventricular foramen, or foramen of Monroe, comes to the third ventricle. From the third ventricle, by way of the cerebral aqueduct, goes to the fourth ventricle. As you can see, the fourth ventricle located right behind the pounds and in front of the uh, cerebellum. Now, so you're looking at this structure here. It's going to give you the same kind of representation. You can see the ventricle, corpus callosum. You can that's a lateral ventricle, third ventricle, fourth ventricle. Right, this letter section here is going to be the interventricular foramen, foramen of Monroe, and this one is going to be your uh, cerebral aqueduct that is located right alongside there. Now, uh, right here, this is known as your cranial nerve number one or olfactory nerve which is sits right on inside of the brain right alongside of the cripiform plates then right underneath here these are part of your optic nerve or cranial nerve number two which produces the sense of vision and of course this letter structure here this is known as the pituitary gland which it fits right into the cello these two Cranial nerves, cranial nerve number one, which is the olfactory, and cranial nerve number two, which is the optic, are part of the cerebrum. The rest of the cranial nerves that you can see here are going to be part of the brain stem. All right. So I hope that uh, this was uh, helpful to learn some of the basic structure of the brain, and uh, thank you for watching.